I am your host, Norman Sanzo. Joining me today is Silver Quill. I have spent a full, small fortune in movies. I resent the pricing and the popcorn. <laughs> All righty then. And also joining us is Sapphire Heart Song. An old lady gave me a churro. I'm all set and ready to go. Yay! Also joining us is James Cork. Hello everybody, I'm Mr. James Cork. And I'm here to tell you about the most disappointing movie I have ever seen in my life. Star Wars Episode 8, The Last Jedi. Um... Now, I'm not going to make that voice throughout the entire review, but I expect that if I'm going to show up in one of these, I'm going to make my Mr. Plinket. You can't stop me! Uh, well, if you guys didn't know, in this week's, well, quote-unquote review show, we're going to take a look see at all of the movies we watch of 2017. Which one we like, which one we dislike. Um, I think we are going with five likes, one dislikes, one surprise, and one disappointing. That's what we agreed on prior to recording. All right, then. This is our opinion, and you shouldn't really take it to heart it's what we have to say about the movies we watch if you have something in your list of movies that you enjoy why don't you put it down in the comments and we'll see what you like because i know i've enjoyed the movies i've seen and i was disappointed at the movies i've seen too by the way before we officially start i need to ask sappy did you watch the my little pony movie yes uh, all right um since you were not on that movie review episode what did you think about it i thought it was a wild ride I like Pinky's faces. I didn't really have much to say. I'm sorry. It has horses in it. <laughs> what about the songs? Did you like the songs? Only one. Ooh, which one? Well, it, it was the one with uh, Capper, I believe. Uh, the friend you need. That was it. Oh, wow. All righty then. All righty then. Not many people like that song. That's refreshing to hear. People usually forget about that one. Mm. I'm the friend that you That's need. Me. All right, then. That was All a right, fun. Then. That was a fun song. It was probably one of the only few good songs in that. All right, all right. So, anywho, let's head into the movies that we saw, the good movies that is, and let me start off with the Lego Batman movie. Oh, really? Yep. This is oh, one. I love of... the Lego Batman movie. So, is that like your number five? Uh, like this is in no particular order. In no particular order. This is, uh, listed in when they came out. Like, I think this came out in February, probably. Chronological order. Yeah. Like, this is... Oh, no, it released in January. No. Yeah, February, February 10. January for Dubai. <laughs> uh, Dublin. You know what? I'm just listing it out via when I saw it. So, Lego Batman was the first. So, who here watched it? I know I have. Um, you? I did. Uh, I, I did. did. I did too. And you know what? We're going to take it off the list as well. That one is also on my top five. <laughs> I don't I have a top five or two. I love that movie. I love that movie so much. <laughs> it was so good. <laughs> yeah. This movie knows what it is and it plays around with itself. Like, oh man, if you guys have not watched it, you should. This is a lot of fun. It was from the same people who brought you the Lego movie. And it shows. It's a movie that's it's so funny. It gets you laughing even before the the company logos show up. Yeah, and even the trailers for it. Like, I remember watching the trailers in 2016 and how absurd it was. Like, it was like Batman singing the Black and Yellow theme song. I don't know. And it was just... No, he, he was singing like... I don't know. I, I just remember Batman singing heavy metal and it was the greatest thing ever. They had a trailer for the Lego Batman movie before Batman v Superman. Yeah. How are you supposed to take the Batman v Superman seriously <laughs> after you are Easy, done you watch, watching Batman do a rap solo? <laughs> oh, wow. Beatbox Easy. rap never solo. Take it seriously. Oh, man. Zack Snyder is the biggest joke. But no, see, this movie was fun. I do like the characteristic of this version of Batman, um, this version of Bruce Wayne too. He was really fun. What else? Uh, the villains, w w they were... He was were... a man-child and it was great. <laughs> Wait, which which villains? Because the movie starts with... Are we going to spoil this? Is this a spoiler? Yeah. Terrific? Yeah, spoilers oh, okay. are spoilers are hope. Oh, spo spoilers away. Mm. The first scene has Batman capturing all of the villains from the comics, the TV shows, and whatnot. Mm -hmm. 
And halfway through the movie, they have to go out of the universe and get new villains. <laughs> so they get, they get the the eye of the eye of Sauron, <laughs> King Kong, the goddamn Daleks from Doctor Who. It's, it's, it's insane. That. It's insane. The, the the Jurassic Park dinosaurs, Agent Smith from the Matrix. I forgot it's about that. Oh god. Completely crazy. The shark from Jaws also appears. <laughs> Oh, uh, oh, yeah, I forgot. I totally forgot about that. Oh my goodness! How can you forget about the best part of the entire movie? It was literally a year ago. Oh my God! You and your Alzheimer's. Oh. You have to. You have to get more vitamin D, man. Silver, what about you, man? You've been quiet. Well, I thoroughly loved uh, Lego Batman. I I'm just listening to you two gush. My personal favorite is when Batman is protesting. No, 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 no. <laughs> And he's no, 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 no. He's just uh, folding himself or cartwheeling basically up the stairs. And people forget Batman can be used for comedy too. Everyone's like, oh, you've got to be gritty. And I will admit, with the loss of Adam West last year, mm -hmm. oh. getting to have that clip of the old Batman. Make fun of the camp all you want, folks, but we wouldn't have the Batman we do today if not for Adam West's presentation. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh, yes. Adam West and the Adam West Batman kept Batman alive during the 60s. True, true. Adam and... West, Adam West. <laughs> Adam West. Uh, and the whole uh, retrospective of the whole Batman series via Alfred <laughs> in Lego form. First, you had what... Um, the dark night. You went through this crisis, sir, in 2016, 2012, 2008, 2005, 1997, 1996, 1988, 1989, and that weird one from the 1960s. Yeah, I have aged really well. I do, I do like how they highlighted the bad nipples. Yes, that was the 1997 one. Like shot of the bad nipples. <laughs> you got it. It's perfect. <laughs> oh, wow. the, uh, mm. I, we highly recommend you go buy this or rent this. It's fun. Go get the Batman, the Lego Batman movie. Yes, it's it's better than the Lego movie. <laughs> it's way better than the Lego movie. Yeah. It, it's it's a throwback to that, and that's that's the other thing. Uh, it it is a funny movie, but it doesn't betray the character of Batman. It stays true to the character. It's one of the best Batman movies we've had in a while. Mm, true that, true that. And it's definitely better than Batman v Superman, that's for sure. <laughs> well, oh, yeah. It, that's why it's fun when Superman says, come on, i destroy you. No, you wouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I do like the part where um, the Joker was kind of um, uh, emotional when he says, I'm not your greatest um, foe. No, my greatest foe is Superman. <laughs> like, what the hell? Aren't you two heroes? Um, oh, oh, it's fun. more in a rivalry sense. <laughs> Making a team out of super villains who had that stupid idea anyway. <laughs> uh, but anywho, I'm gonna take out and Silver. What about you, man? What's your favorite movie? Well, see, here, movies that have not been covered. Let's go with Logan. Ooh, that's on my list. Ooh, Logan. Oh, so dark, so severe, so different from any other X Men movie. It seems a bit hopeless, and yet Logan manages to reclaim hope and open yet another franchise. Well done, Logan. I mean, it is heartbreaking to see Charles Xavier the way he is. And that you see that these guys are reaching the end of their line. They're, they're, they're kind of living just to live, but they're not really sure of where they're going. Yeah, and the whole movie is set up after the rewrite, uh, which was what? Um, Days of Future Past, was it? Yeah, so th this, is, this may actually be an alternate future may not match the canonical one, whichever that may be. But don't matter, because everyone's like, whoa, Wolverine can cuss in this one, and he can be brutal. I mean, what he does to those uh, those hoodlums at the beginning, oh, he yeah. just loses it, and it that just goes a, from there. That is a declaration of intentions, that first scene. They are telling you, yeah, no, this is not the X-Men movie you're used to. This is not even about Wolverine. This is Logan. Was this a rated R film, by the way? Oh, oh yes. yes. Oh, okay. Thanks. Thanks to Deadpool. <laughs> Yay. Who wasn't in the movie, but he had a good trailer with it. <laughs> Sounds about right. Was it the one where he's on the phone booth? Yeah. 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 <laughs> wow, nice Deadpool. costume. Sip it, Stanley. <laughs> I thought that was Deadpool's original trailer. What? Oh, no, Deadpool that's the sequel. Two. 
Yeah, that's Deadpool too. <laughs> yeah, that's the yeah. one. He was parodying Superman. <laughs> uh, wow. Okay, back to Logan. Mm. <clears throat> uh, but Logan, uh, the villains weren't as interesting. But this was really a drama piece about Logan, Xavier, and now X twenty three. I believe it's X twenty three. Yes, it is X twenty three. Yeah, you're right. So, but it's sad to see Logan's final battle and just a great deal of drama and weight to it. it just, I, I don't die, Logan. I oh, wait, it's a Marvel movie. No one dies. But technically, he Never did. Real. He did die for this one. Like, but this is Marvel, Norman. When was the yeah. last time anyone stayed dead in Marvel? In the comics, never. In the comics, never. But this is Fox uh, X Men, not Marvel. No. Marvel movie. So but you know the 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 advantage that we have over the comics when it comes to the movies is that there is no way you can keep the actors the same age. Sooner or later, they are going to get old. Oh yeah, true. This was a good. They were, this was a good send off. I mean, <laughs> Hugh Jackman is one of the few actors who has managed to keep playing the character over several movie series. I mean, he was Wolverine in every X Men movie. Mm -hmm. Nobody else played the role. All I'm saying is they did bring Cyclops and Jean Grey back. And then they killed him again. <laughs> yeah. Huzzah! Uh, yeah. I, I, oh, God. That one. I hated Days of Future Past just for that. I really didn't like that movie, but it was so good that we don't have Jean Grey and Cyclops anymore. No, Jean Grey's a lot of trouble. But no, with Hugh Jackman here, he screams Wolverine. Like, when you see Wolverine, you picture Hugh Jackman. And I don't know if you guys know this, but at one Comic-Con, um, one Comic-Con event, uh, Hugh Jackman dressed up as Wolverine, cosplaying as him. And he went to the show floor as Wolverine, and nobody knew it was him. They all saw <laughs> him as Wolverine. and like A good cosplayer of yeah, Wolverine. And they say that, oh, you're too tall for him. You've got to be shorter. <laughs> <It's> like... <laughs> <laughs> so that's how iconic Hugh Jackman is. And I don't blame the guy for wanting to have a last run at the MCU because he wants that. Uh, Wolverine versus Hulk movie. He wants that. He did show interest on beyond the MCU, but eh, let's see what happens. Let's see what even happens to those R-rated movies that Fox was doing. Well, uh, Touchstone Pictures do exist. Uh, Touchstone is a subsidiary of the Disney. But anywho, that's something for a different day. But Logan, I, I like this one. I like this one. And it was surprising. And if I do remember right, they did a black and white cut of the movie. Ooh. Wow, white? What? There is a black and white cut of the movie? Yes, all in black and white, no colors. So that's something for you to check out if you go look for a special feature. I'm just going to say that Logan is not on my list, but it's a, it was a great beginning of the year when it comes to comic book movies. It was difficult to choose, well, until we got to Justice League, but it, it was difficult to choose a comic book movie from, uh, from 20, uh, 2017. They have been great. Oh, yeah. Like, last year was the year of the comic books. No, oh, my God. It was difficult. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to pass it on to Seppi. What have you watched? Spider-Man Homecoming. Ah, that's on my list, too. Speaking yeah. of good, sp uh, speaking oh of good boy, comic Spider book movies. Oh, boy, Spider-Man Homecoming. Um, I am way past the age of high school, middle schoolness. Mm -hmm. Yet, it was just a fun movie for me, and somehow I could relate to it in one way or another, even though it's sort of minorly controversial. Go ahead. I absolutely love the actor who played Spider-Man in this. Tom Hardy? Forget Tobey Maguire. This guy is the best Spider-Man I have seen in years. Okay, question though. How is this controversial? I don't know, because, I... you know, when people think that, like, certain actors are better than another and... I thought everybody loved... I, I thought everybody it. loved... I thought everybody loved Tom Holland. Yeah, like, I thought everybody It's Tom did. Holland, by the way, Norman. Tom Hardy is Mad Max. Yeah, sorry, my bad, my bad. Yes, Tom Holland, that's his name. I, I don't know. I mean, yeah, I've, I've seen a lot of people like Tom Holland, but, you know, there's always some purist who enjoys, like, the original or one particular actor over another, and it's just like, he is witty, he is funny. This kid is, like, the best Spider-Man I've ever seen. He is witty so and funny, long. but he's witty and funny, but he's also fragile. He does the over the being over the head, over uh, like 
oh, I am in a situation that I bit off more than I could chew and I have no idea how to deal yeah. with this. I need to make the best out of it. Spider-Man was about that, but he was also about the wheat. There was a balance between uh, Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield that they were not achieving. Tom Holland is perfect. I completely agree with Safi. Tom Holland was a, it's a great Spider-Man. I do agree with this one because so I do like Spider-Man's rendition by Tom Holland here. He's much more up-to-date. He's much more witty. He's much more like a younger Spider-Man. Like uh, Tobey Maguire was an older Spider-Man. Like he was a senior in high school and he graduated to become a photographer for the Daily Planet and so on. Tobey Maguire was the safe by the Bell Spider-Man <laughs> because he looked like he was 30 in an environment where there should be a 16 or 17 year old. <laughs> this is the first time we have an age correct Spider-Man playing the role of Spider-Man. He's a kid. Yeah, yeah. He's a 18, 19 year old who just got thrown into this world of gods that he has no idea how to deal with because, oh my God, there's Thor. <laughs> <laughs> Although, Norman, did you just say he became a photographer for the Daily Planet? Sorry, Bugle. My goodness. <laughs> oh my god, I just realized he totally did. I mean, if you're trying to to upset all the people in the comments section, well done. <laughs> By the you, way, I have you, to point out something. There was a crossover between those two. There you know was. Mm. If he became a photographer for the Daily Planet in the current MCU, he's going to get shot in the head. <laughs> uh, oh god, no. Uh... <laughs> Screw you, Jimmy Olsen. <laughs> oh, boys. Um, I have nothing to say, you Norman. Sorry, sorry. Just... But you mentioned Toby, right? Um, Tom here wants Toby to play Uncle Ben. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be funny. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I don't know. I think James... <laughs> I'm just the only thing that I can think of when people say Uncle Ben is that photo of Toby Maguire Spider Man just breaking down in tears going Uncle Ben <laughs> Uncle Ben why <laughs> Oh my god uh, Joe why you do this to me? I don't Screw know, I'm just saying, I'm just saying what I know. But anywho, Silver, what what do you, what do you think man about this movie? Is it in your good movie list? Oh very much so. It was Wow. It was a wonderful return to Spider-Man, a wonderful change. And the only thing I found funny is how insistent everyone was afterwards. She's not Mary Jane Watson. She's not Mary Jane. Hmm. Like, Wait, oh, you mean? There was one character who was MJ. Yeah, I figured she was the reimagining of MJ. But people, the show staff, the movie staff and people online were like, no. Yeah, She's a whole new character. She's not Perry Jane. Yeah. And it's just like, okay, then why she called her MJ? Shut uh, up. I don't <laughs> wait, 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 wait. So this MJ character is not Mary Jane. Uh, apparently she's not meant to be. Well, that's cool. That's fine. I mean, if you think about that, Spider-Man Homecoming is, uh, I mean, it's not on my list. I'm going to say that right away, oh. but I love that movie because it's, it's anti-Spider-Man. It's like... Oh, oh, we had five movies. We had the Sam Raimi ones and the Sony Pictures Universe ones. That They are there, and they can get so repetitive after a while with Spider-Man swinging between buildings and fighting the bad guys and either killing them or whatever, it's, uh, fighting against the Green Goblin. Are we going to do that again? No. Spider-Man doesn't swing against uh, uh, between a single skyscraper in the entire movie. They even have that point where he's in a golf course <laughs> and he has to run through it because there is no way he can stick his spider web anywhere. That that was great. It's it's like, okay, we have all of those movies they have done this thing. We can do more with the character. That's great. He can't stick it anywhere, huh? Yeah, he can stick it the he can stick the web anywhere. Uh, the MJ oh. character is called uh, Michelle Jones. But again, why call her MJ at all? I'm just I saying. I don't know. Maybe Mary Jean also, Watson. Uh... Did anyone caught that subtle nod as uh, uh, to Gwen Stacy? Gwen Stacy. I kind of know. Did anyone it? catch that? The uh, when after the after the uh, after Spider Man saves everybody from falling through the elevator mm -hmm. uh, on Washington and. They they are on TV and they're getting interviewed and this teacher is on on TV and he's like, oh, it's a good thing that none of our students died. It, I wouldn't want anything like that to happen again. Like that that was worded almost like a joke, 
But then I was like, are they making a reference to what happened with Wang Stacy? Because she, in the comics, she kind of died the same way. And since this movie is so sparse when it comes to Uncle Ben's death, they don't talk about that. Wang Stacy, they don't talk about it. But there was a bit of a hint of like remorse on that guy's voice. It was like, oh, in, in, are they talking about that? I didn't know no, this. Uncle yes. Ben! <laughs> Uncle Ben, why? But no, I, I I think that was a reference to um to Wang Stacy. Probably, but I didn't notice that. Uh, still, it'll be a fun rewatch to point uh, should to to try and. Find oh yeah, it. watch that again. Watch that again and notice that point where where they are making the interviews on TV. Mm-hmm. And... Well, all I know is they had Felicia Hardy in the background. Oh really? Now. Yep, Black Cat. Oh yeah, I didn't notice that, but it's still cool. So anywho, uh, let's head on to the next person, and that's you, James. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm. You guys are gonna hate me. I only have one uh, uh, superhero comic book movie on my list. If we don't count Lego Batman, mm-hmm. um, so let's see what happens there. But no, my my. I'm gonna go with in order. Like I'm gonna leave my favorite movie of the year for last. So I'm just gonna follow my own list. So um, on my list, I will go with Atomic Blonde. Huh? That's new. I haven't heard of it. Atomic I Blonde. Seen that. It's a, it's a movie by one of the guys who directed the first John Wick movie. Oh. Uh, it stars Charlize Theron and John Goodman, and it's based on a, oh also Sofia Butella, who you will know from Star Trek Beyond, and it, the the movie is it's a spy movie that takes place during the Cold War era, and it's one of the most brutal action-packed spy movies, not just spy movies but movies in general. That came out this year. This year has been rather sparse with action. Uh, unfortunately, we rely too much on CGI. We don't edit action movies well nowadays. There is one scene in Atomic Blonde that takes place. It's done all in one shot, or at least done in, done in one shot and then very cleverly edited to, to make it look like it's one. Where it takes place on a building. They go from room to room. And Charlie Sterling is just fighting these thugs as she's trying to protect a a, a scientist. It, it's very classic uh, Cold War plot, this one. And it all takes place within one shot. From the building, inside the building, room to room, she's fighting these guys, falling downstairs, crashing through doors, crashing through walls. Then at one point, they jump out a window, they get in a car. It's still in the same shot. Jump in a car, get in the car, and then they get... They get Crash with another car and then thrown into a river, and it, it's it's impactful cinema. Maybe it's because the movie that I saw prior to this one was Transformers: The Last Night, <laughs> and the action in that movie is just well, the entire movie is just horrendous, and the action is so poorly shot. This one is so beautiful; it's so well choreographed. If you guys haven't seen it, uh, give it a watch because it's. it's a movie that will re- re- recuperate your faith on action movies that feel like they hurt, like you know, like your Die Hards, your mm. uh, Hard Boils, your uh, hell, I will even go as far as saying as Predator, where you can feel the punches, you can feel the impact, and I don't know, I, there is no other way I could call it, but it's almost like sexy violence. Mm. All right. You know, maybe because Charlie Theron is such a beautiful, beautiful lady. And she's such an action star. You guys saw Mad Max Fury Road, right? Mm-hmm. Oh, yes. Nope. She brings... Uh, Charlize Theron brings to Atomic Blonde what she brought to Mad Max Fury Road in a, a bit more verbose way, but my, my God, it's she's mesmerizing. All right, all right. Atomic Blonde, there's something to check out. Hey, you sexy lady. Whoop, 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 whoop. So, <laughs> whoop, Atomic Blonde. <laughs> oh, something blunt. All right. So, anywho, back to me and my list. I have only two left because. Wow. Wait, what? Two? Well, well you said Lego Batman and Spider Man Homecoming. Yeah, What's but, the other one? Uh, what was it? Lego Batman. Spider-Man Logan? Home- yes, Logan. Logan. Wow. That was also in my good list. And so, two more to go for me. And this one is a surprise for me because uh, I- I'm going to set it up for you guys. I love to play this one first-person shooter called Payday 2. And the thing about Payday 2 is you're a bank robber. You rob banks and whatnot. And they do love to put in promotions for uh, action movies in 
the game. And one of the characters that they insert was John Wick. Ha! Yep. So nice. I love John speaking Wick. Of John Wick. Yeah, yeah. Speaking of John yeah, Wick. Speaking of John Wick. Speaking of John Wick. Speaking of John Wick. So I discovered John Wick there. And hearing that the second movie is going to come out, I got excited. A friend of mine said, go watch the first one before you watch two. So I did. And oh my goodness, I wish I watched it when it came out because it was good. So building anticipation for myself, I went into the second one with very high expectations. And it did not disappoint. The <laughs> second movie was good. This one was wow. Talk about your gun food done well. This movie put the... Your gun foo? Yes, that is a literal way of putting action, uh, fighting with guns. Gun foo. Yeah. Your gun foo. Yeah, they call it our gun kata. Gun kata was from Equ Equilibrium, mm -hmm. that Christian yeah. Bale movie. Yes, so as was a freaky child. <laughs> it yeah. was terrifying. <laughs> yeah, but still. Also, it's the it's the best Matrix reunion ever <laughs> yeah, because you have yeah. Neo going to meet with Morpheus <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> on the top of a building. It's it's Matrix yeah. again. Whoa. Whoa. Yeah, but this one was good. Like the action scenes. Like James, you mentioned that um, Atomic Blonde was a good send back to the old action days of way back when, right? Uh, yeah, uh, Atomic Blonde is an impactful movie. I also saw John Wick 2, by the way, uh, which is directed by the guy who didn't direct uh, Atomic Blonde. They, they, did, they part ways. One did Atomic Blonde, the other one did John Wick 2, yeah. because they did John Wick together. Mm -hmm. But still, you, you can feel it here, because the fight scenes were good, and the premeditation for the scenes were good too, because John Wick researched everything. He said, set pieces here, there, and make sure everything was right for his getaway. Like, oh my goodness, this was fun. And, okay, the, there's one scene that's stupid, and I'm guessing you guys all know which scene I'm talking about. Are you talking about this mo the, the silent shootout in the subway while they're yes. shooting at each other as they're walking by? Yes! <laughs> <laughs> the most ridiculous... You know what? The, okay, before we go any further, have you guys seen John Wick 2? I have not. Nope. Oh, okay. No, but are you? Are you? Have you seen the first one at least? I, I have think not. Silver and, oh. I think Silver and I are just sitting here like, what? Okay. Um. In the in the universe of John Wick, everyone is a hitman. Everything is run by this organization that pays people in gold, and that they have hits for one or or the other. And John Wick is a hitman. Mm -hmm. And there is one scene in the second movie where John Wick is being chased by a bunch of other hitmen, and they are walking by, uh, by, by on a subway station. One of them is on, a, on an elevated pass, and John Wick is on the bottom, and they are shooting at each other, uh, guns with silencers, with suppressors, and they're shooting at each other, and they, nobody around notices, <laughs> as they are just pew, 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 pew. It's literally like that. It's so silly. It's kind of brilliant. Yeah. And there's okay. this there's a scene in the first movie where they mention that John Wick, he killed a man with a freaking pencil. Oh, okay. He's By the, the way, Joker? No, 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 no. <laughs> no, he's no joke. He's no joke, believe me. You okay, you haven't seen John Wick. I can I try and sell it to you guys. Oh, please do. <laughs> okay, I'm going to try and sell it to you guys. Can I uh, Silver, Safi, may I? Yeah. Go okay. ahead. Make the okay. pick. So, John Wick is an ex-hitman. He has retired and his wife died of cancer. And before she died, she leaves him uh, one last gift, which is a puppy. An adorable little puppy. And then one yeah. day, one day, some jerks uh, that are part of the family for whom John Wick used to work to break into his house, steal his car, and kill the puppy. Now, now cool. John Wick sees that as they kill the one thing that I have left of my wife, I am going to go after this guy who happens to be the son of the mafia boss that he used to work for, and he's going to kill everybody in order to get to him. It's, it's a revenge story for every dog lover out there. Mm -hmm. But I don't want to see Dougie get killed. Oh, no, you, well, you want no, to see the revenge. I don't want to 
to see this movie now? You want to see the revenge? Seriously, seriously you, you do need want to see, see the revenge. Seriously, it's a, it, it's a movie about a guy who murders the entire Russian mafia because they kill his puppy. It's so satisfying to watch. I don't want to watch the puppy die. You, the the do puppy it. died. Yeah, I'm with the old man here. The puppy died. But... James, you spoiled the sale. Also, <laughs> Seffy. No. You shipped Thorax and his brother. <laughs> Kill yourself. Uh, but still... It's off the rails now, Norman. Yep. Abort. Yep. So anyway, uh, John Wick Escape. 2. John Wick 2 was fun. Uh, I I highly recommend people go watch this. Oh my god, John Wick 2. Holy so, crap. anywho, Silver, what about you? Well, let's see here. We've been plowing through some good films. Uh, but let's talk about Wonder Woman! Ooh. Wonder Woman! Huh, surprisingly, my... that's not in my uh, good movie. That's in my surprise list. Well, she, she was a highlight this year for... Basically, she's been the best DC movie, period. She's been the only good DC movie, oh, yeah. period. Go girl power, then. Mm. Well, good, go good storytelling. Go having bright colors and uh, liking, the, liking the characters, not worrying about if they're going to be superheroes in the next movie. No, they're just characters, good characters. <laughs> and here's, here's Wonder Woman... Also being a much better character than she was in Batman v uh, Superman. Mm -hmm. Seeing her go, grow from this naive young woman to this powerhouse. Uh, seeing the best and the worst of Madden's world. And nice thing is that while they, they definitely acknowledge the sexism of both the time period and even stuff that's carried forward to today. It doesn't become the sole defining trait. Which I think would actually drive an audience away rather than uh, get them thinking. Mm -hmm. so, Ghostbusters. Yeah. Uh, Anyways, that wasn't this year, thankfully. Oh God, yeah. Uh, so I I consider Wonder Woman a delight. Th there are several uh superhero movies that are on my list, but this one stands as probably the best in terms of storytelling and uh and characterization. However, I can't deny that Ares. Oh the boy. God freaking dang it. Go on, go on, go on. Well, really, the nostalgia critic did it best, although he kind of <laughs> mocked himself in the process. Hello. <laughs> Hello. I mean, when he put on the armor, it's like, don't! You've got eye holes. Just leave it at that. Just leave it at that! No, he's showing his face. No. Oh, yeah. It's, you know what? Uh, uh, God, I'm so glad we're talking about that kind of worms, because that's where the movie lost interest for me yep. is, am, am i the only one who feels the warner bros executive looking at the screenplay and going mm, yeah this is fine but you don't have a boss fight at the end we want a boss fight at the end can you put a boss fight at the end we don't care we're, we're gonna put a boss fight at the end it feels like a very chart moment yeah but still it's one of those action movie scenes where you need to have a boss fight at the end so no, no, not really. The way that Wonder Woman was built, it could have had a more poignant ending than point at your at your, at your enemy, destroy Rar. Well, how would you end it then? Uh, I would have ended it with uh, Wonder Woman. She just faced this general guy, and the war is still going. And then she has the conversation with Chris Pine's character, whose name is escaping Steve. me right now. And she, well, she's talking with him and. They just say their goodbyes, and that's when Wonder Woman realizes, like she has that silent moment where she's looking at the battlefield and at the airfield, and it's all on flames, and everybody's shooting at each other, and that's like, oh, it shows that war is not just one person; it's not located on one element. War is inside everyone, and it doesn't matter if you destroy someone; it doesn't matter if you think you're you have killed the root of the problem; it's still going. And then have Wonder Woman face up against. Dr. Poison, which is the character, the, the one body that seems to be having the most amount of build-up and the most amount of backstory, that's what I thought it was, it was heading towards. But no, they have to slap Ares at the end. It's like, oh, God, guys, why did you do that? Ares was more of a concept. No way you can have David Thewlis, who's... Uh, he, he's a dweeb. <laughs> you cannot have a dweeb be Ares. Like, what? I, the, no! Uh, but here's the thing with the movie. They set it up as... Ares is the god of war. We need to kill Kratos. I mean, um, Ares. 
So we need to get him down. And yeah, but he that's that. Kratos. Ares was a concept. It didn't need to be a physical person. Uh, that's like saying, oh, we have to prevent death from. We have to prevent this patient from dying. And then at the end of the movie, you have a doctor fighting against death. I totally agree with your version of the ending. If it was not in a movie where the Greek gods exist, because in the DCU, the Greek god exists. I too was kind of surprised that the Doctor Poison didn't have more of a uh, more of a role in the climax. But I also tried to imagine how that would go. I am a Doctor who has is a poison. I'm a I'm a Greek demigod who can hold her breath. Oh, <laughs> rats. Well, it didn't have to be like a fight, mano a mano, and just, you, you know, I, I wasn't thinking, oh, let's have Dr. Poison fly, fly in a plane around Wonder Woman throwing flasks of poison at her. No, you don't need to do that. It can still be a battle of the wits. Wonder Woman is as sharp with her sword as she is with her tongue. It could have been a much more cleverly written thing. I'm pretty sure the director had a much better idea uh, uh, for the ending, and someone from Warner Brothers just decided to slap that on it. It it reminded me of the Doomsday fight on Batman v Superman. I was oh, like, that oh. one was forced, but this one seems planned. This one is forced too. Really, I thought it was planned. I I, I really saw the, it. It it, fe- it felt shoehorned. It, really, it sounds like I hate. It it, so- it sounded like I hated the movie. I didn't. I thought Wonder Woman was excellent. It, huh. uh, that was the one thing that made me go. Eh, they could have saved that. Oh well. I actually went to see this with my mother and my grandmother. My mm-hmm. grandmother and I enjoyed it. My mom was kind of put off a little bit because of how cliched the story Ooh. was. Oh. Other than that, she was perfectly okay with it. Did she mention what was cliche? Just, like, the whole story. Like, she mentioned how uh, she could, like, pull it all together, like, at the end, including, like, who the villain was. Oh, really, No. Yeah. Mother really, and I... I watch a lot of movies. I was gonna say I was generally surprised by the villain. I'm still thinking, no, don't, don't show your face again. Which which one of the which one of the villains? Which one of the three? Ares. Ares. Uh. Oh, all right, all right, all right. But anywho, let's pass it on to Seppi. What was your good movie? Wait, we're passing it on to me. I thought it was Norman, then Silver. Silver. Norman Silver, Safi James. Well, I'm trying to think of a... Oh, right, Kingsman. Oh, the, the oh. second one. Kingsman, uh... The Golden, the Golden Circle. Circle. I yes. didn't see this one. I hmm. recently saw it because, well, my grandmother got it for my dad for Christmas. Well, my dad doesn't really watch Kingsman, but it's more of a mom and me thing mm-hmm. in that regard. Oh, man, was that movie a thing? <laughs> a thing, yes. You're saying it's mom and me, uh... Mom and Mia, here we go again. My, my mom my. and I watch a lot of action movies. We do not like chick flicks. Let's just say that. It's a good movie, too. It's a good movie, too. I think the only thing I didn't like about this movie all that much was the villain. I don't know. I, I didn't like Poppy that much. Yeah, Pop- Poppy Adams was not a Poppy, memorable... Poppy, like... Was uh, that the one played by Julianne no. Moore? It wasn't that, like, it wasn't that, oh, she's not memorable enough, although that could be possible for the future. Was she and Julian, I, Julian I don't want to say it's because she can't live up to Samuel L. Jackson's performance, but Poppy, I just want to throw her in a friggin' insane asylum. Like, she's not really villainous, like, quality, but she's more insane than she is a villain. But James, to answer your question, yes, that is uh, Julianne Moore. I, uh, okay, that's the only thing I knew about Kingsman, that Julian Moore is in it. Mm-hmm. I mean, with the original Kingsman, what uh, Samuel Jackson's character had going for him was his cause, in a way. Like, yeah, he, he's not a fan of blood, blah, blah, blah. He actually had a point. Sure, he executed it in the wrong way, but he had a point with the environmental theme. Like, yeah, we are making it sick, and we're not making our planet sick, and it's not getting any better. Poppy, I just feel like she just wants recreational drug use for all, and that's it. Also, the president is a douchebag. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but what about the movie? <laughs> <laughs> well, I I enjoyed it. the guy who played Eggsy's character performance. I'm still mad that they... 
Oof. Um, what's his name? I forgot his name already. Harry. I'm mad about Harry, yet happy, yet mad. I'm mostly mad because once you have a character that said he should stay dead, dead. Yeah. It kind of undermines the drama of the, of that scene in the first movie. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I mean, holy crap! They killed off everybody else. Well, are they going to come back in the next movie? I think. I think they. I think they realize. Oh no! We ran out of charismatic British people that are actually good looking. What do we do? Let's revive Colin Firth. <laughs> I am disappointed with that. I am very <laughs> disappointed. I don't know. To me, this movie was a fun watch. Uh, it's in. Oh no, it was fun. It's it not in my. Fun. If I were to do this, I would say this movie was good. But there were a few problems with this one. Like it didn't live up to the first one. You know how some movies, when they have a sequel, the sequel's much better than the original. This one very had, rarely. Yeah, this one had some parts were fun, yet. Some parts were not. Uh, I I think in the first one, uh, there was the song fight. What was the song fight? Yeah, you're talking about the Westboro Baptist Church. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. The... Freebird. Yes. <laughs> yeah, Freebird. Yeah, the Freebird fight. The Freebird fight was awesome. They almost had it in this one. It didn't live up. It didn't live up to it. Like they pulled off. Um, what was that song again? It was. Um, I forgot to. I'm trying to remember. I had it in my playlist because I love the song, but I can't remember for the life of me. Give me a second. And it's Word Up. And Word Up in a Western twang, which is cool. But the fight was okay. It didn't live up to the hype of the previous one. And uh, it kind of deflated me a bit. And yes. Yeah. To me, this was an okay movie. I would say if you watch the first one, watch this one. Yeah. I saw it as well, and it was okay. But one thing that really bothered me is uh, every woman, every female character in this movie is a victim. Yeah. None, of, none of them have autonomy. None of them have a goal or an accomplishment. Even the main villain is only a, a villain because the president is just like, we're going to use her to accomplish our own agenda. <laughs> So it's like, he's the main villain. Yeah. And then, good Lord, the tracker that they have to plant on this one woman. One, mm -hmm. you're going to get perfect microphone recording when it's down there. <laughs> oh, God. Why, why? What? Yep. They plant a tracker within her vagina. Remember yes, that I haven't seen this movie. What the hell? I'm what? not. I'm not sugarcoating it. Yep. Yeah, that is what happened. And I just oh. like... And I just like so. What would you have done if the pers if this target had been a man? Pose a but <laughs> poses his proctologist. <laughs> I'm just like, what? Well, this is the dumbest idea. Why would you even develop this thing? You know, for drama between Exy and the friggin' Scandinavian princess, or was it Swedish? I if this is um, if this if the point of this is to sell someone else a movie. Oh, you're not selling me this one. This I'm not one sure I will sell you this movie. I, no. I enjoyed the first Kingsman. It wasn't like the greatest, but it had some really fun writing. It had some really likable characters. And I, it had fun action. The oh, climax very, was really literally fun the, action. Oh, the my climax God. was literally mind blowing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. This one doesn't reach those lofty heights. And in fact, when I look at how it, it treats its female cast, Halle Berry is in this, but her oh, role no. is completely pointless. Oh, even yeah. worse then. Like and she's supposed to be like Merlin, but female, mm -hmm. and, and apparently not important. Yeah, she doesn't contribute at all to the to the resolution. And she's like, I wanted to be a field agent, but this one guy, Tequila, played by by played by Channing Tatum, he keeps no. blocking me. No? no, no, not not Channing Tatum's character. Uh, the the one guy who was the uh, villain, the other villain, the agent Tequila. Yeah, I, I I have to say it was Tequila who's blocking her, but he no, too was... it was Whiskey. Whiskey? Okay, my bad. Yeah, Whiskey was the one who was blocking her. What the hell are you guys even talking about? <laughs> all of the uh, 
all of the statesmen are named after drinks. Uh, oh my god, this is so confusing. I'm so lost and <laughs> bored. No. Whoa. Whoa. Oh. Well, here's the thing. I, Zafi, I think we're going to have to agree to disagree and because I'm not willing to rewatch this to settle the argument. I'm right, though. I don't think you are. <laughs> yeah, I am. But it, it, regardless, <laughs> whoever whoever is blocking her, it's his one vote that keeps her out of an active field of agent status. Why is she not going up to this guy and saying, "What's your what is your problem? Why are you blocking me? And have it out with him. Instead, she just sort of meekly goes back to her job. It's like, no, you have a goal. Pursue it. Mm-hmm. If this guy tries to block you, find out why and either Screw resolve him it over. or stomp him. Yeah, screw him over. Honestly, the only thing I can really say I can, like, enjoy about this movie, other than some jokes and whatnot, the action scenes were still really good. Like, even though they weren't as good as the first movie, I still enjoyed the action scenes. Mm-hmm. That was true. That was true. Although it will never live up to the church scene from the last movie. Yeah, a few things live up to that scene, though. But anywho, uh, moving on to you, James. I'm disappointed in you guys, because you haven't said this movie yet. And I thought this was going to be, like, on everybody's list, like, the first one. Oh, yeah, let's talk about this one. Because everyone, everyone that I talk to, they love this movie. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, we, we have talked about a bunch of comic book movies so far. Mm-hmm. Um, movies based on comics, whatnot. And, like, like, like I said before, this year, a lot of great comic book movies came out. And I had to sit down and say, okay, now... Which one of these got got me so riled up, gave me exactly what I wanted, and then some, and and turned out to be both emotional and hilarious at the same time? And to oh, me, are you th- talking th- about Guardians of the Galaxy too? Th- there is no context. A uh, contest. I cannot say the sentence "I'm Mary Poppins, Joel" <laughs> without giggling and getting a little choked up at the same time. That movie is great. Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 is absolutely great. I've only seen the first one. I, I saw it, but it, it's... I wasn't as smitten as yourself, James. <laughs> I, that, is not, that is not to say I don't love the line, Hey, I'm Mary Poppins, <laughs> y'all. <laughs> yeah. Uh... It's, I, I guess that's, that, that's usually what, it, what the movie divides uh, people on, is that there's people that like the first movie a lot, and they thought the second one was all right. And there's people that think that the, that the first movie was all right uh, and like the second one a lot. I'm more in the second group. I, I thought this movie took all of the characters from the first one and beefed them up. It gave them a lot more character. It fixed a lot of issues that I had. Remember how the character of Gamora, uh, Soy Saldana's character, was a bit flat in the first movie? Mm-hmm. But in this one, they gave her a backstory and a character arc and everything. It's like, oh, that's so, she's so much better now. They gave her the dynamic with her with her sister Nova, and like that's cool to see them bigger and complaining at each other, but at the same time talking about how they uh, they got to where they got. Uh, Did it the, 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 the vibe off those two? Well, no, not ex- not exactly because I mean they talk about the atrocities that the their uh, surrogate father did to them. Uh, well, the scene where, where the scene where Nova breaks down and says, "Like you have no idea what it's like to get your brain taken out of your head and re- being replaced," that was that was hard to listen to in a good way. In a good, it's properly horrifying. How do you know Celestia and Luna don't have horror stories? <laughs> Daddy wouldn't let me have another slice of cake. <laughs> <laughs> That's I'm trying not to talk about horses. <laughs> Uh, I, whereas I am just horsing around. You're just horsing around. But you're only half a horse. <laughs> uh, the patoot. Oh, boys. Yeah. <laughs> James, uh, with uh, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2, I like it. I like it, but there was something that didn't push it to awesomeness. I like it. I bought the soundtrack, and having Mr. Blue Skies at the very intro was fun. But what was missing for you? I don't know. Oh, I think it. it was in the middle because it felt too slow, too laggy. The interaction between... Um, what, what exactly lagged for you? I'm, I'm going... They I think forgot it. the red bone. Say what? The red bone. You know. No, I don't know. Hey, what the... hey, hey, hey. 
Oh yes, the scene where he the scene in the first movie where he's dancing through the alien oh, ruins. That. Come yeah, on, get that your love. Yeah. That was the beginning of the movie, and they they lampooned it on this one rather well, I'll say. Mm. But well, where see, they, they instead of having Star Lord dancing, they have Baby Groot dancing yeah, to, the, to the music. That's why I said uh, Mr. Blue Sky. Well, the action ha- well the action happens in the back. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> which is a great way to 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 parody the 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 way that the first movie started. Yeah, and who's the character means the lead character's name? Oh, Star Lord. That's Chris Pratt. Yeah, Star Lord. But what's you're his talking name? about. Uh, you're talking about Peter Quill. Yeah, Peter Quill. Like uh, Peter Quill's interaction with his dad. I I thought that was a bit slow during that part there. Like it dragged the movie down a bit for me. But I do love the confrontation because when his dad turned into Hasselhoff, that cracked me up. <laughs> <laughs> That's perhaps my my only gripe with the movie is that this is something that the guys from Red Letter Media did bring up is that James Gunn likes to have the dramatic moment undercut with a joke like drama and then you put a joke at the end it's like it's fine to break the tension like that Josh Whedon does it all the time uh but in this one it can in places it fell a bit out of place the the David Hasselhoff joke comes right after uh, Ego tells uh, Peter Quill that he put a tumor in his mom's brain it's like how do you follow that up with a reference to David Hasselhoff it's a bit kind of weird, but I don't know. I, I, that, that's my one and only gripe with the rest of the movie. Everything is, everything is great. Yeah, same, same here. It's just that middle part where they're on Planet Ego. Like that part was a bit slow for me. Like it dragged it down. Yeah, but you have, you have like James Gunn has the the visuals in this movie. He has them a bit more riled up than in the first one. It is true that it can be a bit slow, but then you have shots like how when uh, Gamora just leaves the palace and she's just alone on her own in the middle of the planet and she's like on the bottom right of the frame and then everything else is just this wondrous visual visual splendor where you can see the planet and it goes on the it goes on forever. Oh yeah, true, true. That's that's all good. Uh, by the way, Silver, what do you think, man? Like you've been quiet. Well, I'm letting you guys recount this. I too found that. The big thing is the Guardians of the Galaxy were just distant from the galaxy. They're on an isolated planet. They're on a ship in the middle of space. Part of what was fun about the first movie is seeing all these alien worlds and how they interacted. We got the the planet with the golden people who were all tools. (laughs) That was so cool. But then it's like the rest of the universe kind of fades away until this vague danger as the universe is about to be eaten by jello <laughs> well it... if you if you take it by by the the literal definition of the title yeah it is the guardians of the galaxy but why should they be going around the galaxy in order to to have a movie it's it's a more internalized movie i will say it's more based on character rather than uh, action and adventure even though there was plenty of action and adventure in it but, uh, I, well, I will say, because the driving force is Peter's relation to Ego, and, you know, they're playing ball, and they're being father-son, it's like, he's a villain. He's a villain. Yeah, that, that's the... That's... It, they set up, it's only if a villain... Oh, look, he's a villain. Oh, you're going to fight the villain. Okay, you're going to... Yeah, you're fighting I... the villain with the power of Pac-Man. Okay, I love this. <laughs> I, I don't think that was some, uh, that was meant to be like, a, oh, I am your father, look, kind of twist. It was more like, okay... It is clear that this guy's intentions are not clean. Let's see what let's see what he's going to do. Let's see how he lures uh, Peter Quill into it. How he's going to try to take him to the dark side. Let, let let's see what his intentions are. I, I don't know. I it it didn't bother me. Like I mean, did, did it bother you? It sounded like it bothered you. Because I knew that this guy was going to become going to be the final antagonist. It's it suddenly becomes more of a waiting game than it does experiencing it with Peter, and so I couldn't get into it as much as I think as I think you did, James. That's not to say I think it a bad movie. It's just sort of fun, but well, no, not fun. grand. No, no, it's dude. Like you can like or dislike whatever. You want. Man, you have no idea. It's it's cool to have a discussion about that. One doesn't need to agree or disagree with everyone else. Although oh I will God. say, my my friend started to break down and his Yandu passed forward. And it's just like, ah, Yandu, don't go, Yandu. You're the best character Aww. in this movie. 
Don't he was the Poppins. They did that in The Simpsons. He was <laughs> the best character in the movie. Uh-huh. I agree. I totally agree. He was he was great. He was oh, great. Yeah, also, I'm surprised we have gone this far without mentioning Sylvester Stallone. Oh yeah, like well, Sylvester Stallone I and did... Kurt Russell. <laughs> well, I did want to ask if anyone actually understood what he was saying. This institution is I watched the movie dubbed in Spanish, so of course I understood what he was saying. <laughs> okay, now you are just being mean, man. Poor Sylvester Stallone, come on. Did he book the law? Why do people keep casting as this? He has no idea if they have no idea what he's saying. <laughs> That's my big question. To what was <laughs> to what was essentially a cameo, really? Mm. Even though he did have his own after the credit scene, five thousand after the credit scenes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, with special guest appearance by Jeff Goldblum. Oh boy, yeah. And... He was there in the credits. Look him up. Yeah, and best Stan Lee cameo, by the way. Best. Yep. Oh. Best. Oh, I'm, I'm not really. No, I, I... no, dude, you don't know. He that cameo is the cameo to cameo all cameos because it 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 will join up even the cameos that are not part of the MCU. And I think I know which one you're talking about. Like, he is playing an what essentially is an observer. No, not really. He is just basically Stan Lee with the observer. Um, there's a cut line from. Uh, one of his lines that uh, he was saying, and said line is, "Hey guys, um, I used to play a DJ for a strip club. When did that happen? That was in Deadpool. Yes. So that was in Deadpool. Yep. And but they cut it out for obvious reasons because of strip club. Hmm. But no, still, I, I thought they would cut it out because Disney didn't own Twenty Century Fox by then. No, it was just a line. <laughs> like he could just say a, he could just say a line, and it didn't even matter. And it was a reference to a movie, but which movie? You have to be smart about it. But I think it's because it's a quote unquote Disney safe film, PG thirteen, and eh, you yeah, know. Disney PG thirteen movie. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! Yeah, I'm just yeah, saying. Sure. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Yeah, sure. Yeah, but still, um, still, so, James, oh. I agree with you that this movie was fun, but it was it didn't hit hit a point for me. Like it didn't hit it's, that thing for me. It's so it it is. You guys, it's not in any of your list. It didn't quite make it. Yeah, this was not in my good, but this was in my must watch. Wow! All right. Well, you know what? How last year, um, last time we did this one. Uh, I ended up having a bunch of movies that you guys also had in, in mm -hmm. your lists. Mm -hmm. I'm glad that so far I have two that are not like everyone else's. Uh, well, well, we'll see if that's changed after this. because Let's uh, see if it me. continues. <laughs> because with me, I have one last on my good movies list. And this came out of nowhere for me because of the situation of my regular movie friend. They didn't want to watch it, so I had to bring another. And said movie is Coco. Oh, oh, Coco. That's one I of my favorites. To see it, but I didn't get the chance to. I did see it, but it's not on my list. Oh, really? No. It, it is, yeah. Uh, go on, Norman. Why, why did you like Coco so much? Coco is one of those movies where it's rare for me to want to know more, when uh, highly enjoy it on the first watch, want me to buy the soundtrack, and want me to know more of it. And... Me wanting to know more is one of those movies where, oh my goodness, if I dug in deeper, I could have be I could have been a fan. And since this is a Disney Pixar movie, I could probably be a Frozen fan of sorts. I took my parents to see Coco, which is, which is rare because it's hard to find a, a movie that both my parents will want to see, and. While the Frozen short was playing, my mom has an Indiglo watch. It lights up with this bright, bright green that, like, illuminates a quarter of the room. Oh, yeah. And so we've always joked that if the Indiglo comes out, you know that that's the harshest criticism. And as the Frozen short is going on and on, we like, attention, we have Indiglo, we have Indiglo. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
I am with your mom right there. I am with your mom right there. I oh, if my mother's that. a saint. <laughs> no, I am. I agree with her. I agree with her and her watch. <laughs> I skipped the short instead of going to if, instead of watching it, sitting through it. I went to McDonald's. Oh wow! Like for me, I missed the short by a f- well. Technically, I missed the short because I came in late. <laughs> Uh, we had a good. very good. I missed the entire dang movie. Well, it's out. Go buy it or rent it or something like that. But anywho, um, is it? Oh, I yes, go it's it. out. But anywho, um, as for me personally, this movie touched upon all the feels, like the feel between families and relations and music. And oh my goodness, this movie was fun. I, oh man. Like, I, I I don't know how to do it justice because the music in this one was just too good and hearing the Spanish dub is just awesome. <laughs> I, I don't know what to say, man. Like, this is great. And the twist, oh my goodness, I'm not going to spoil it because you have to go watch it. Oh, yeah. Like, the twist is... That was the best part of the movie. That Coco is a movie all about structure. Mm-hmm. So, screenplay-wise, he is flawless mm-hmm. it's one of the best written movies of the year by far yeah and this is one of disney's pixar's best movies yet like i think um <laughs> no really you, you don't think it was the best i, I would i wouldn't go as far i mean can i bring a bit of a criticism to the movie oh sure go ahead yeah i did say that a structure wise writing wise is great but it is great because it takes a lot of elements from disney's uh pixar's app oh up. Uh. Yeah, all the way, all uh, all the way down to main character wants to meet uh, meets with hero of his life, meets the hero happens. Spoiler, 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 spoiler. Mm-hmm. But yeah, it's, well, not well, 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 well. Of, it's not even that big of it's not big it's not even that big of a twist. Um, mm-hmm. You can even go as far as saying that the main body of the movie is very similar to the main body of Up. Hmm. All righty then. So that's why that's why it didn't impress me all that much. Uh, but, you know how before this movie came out, a lot of people were saying, no, I'm not going to go watch this movie because it's exactly like Book of Life. Mm, yeah, I heard of that, but not to that extent. It's, it was a nonsense criticism. And uh, it, it isn't like Book of Life. It's completely different. They are both just as good. Both movies are as good. No, one is not better than the other. Hmm. But I, it depends on what you want. C- Coco is more of a structured story movie. Book of Life is all about a character. Hmm. Uh, so it depends on what you want to get. Oh, I'd, I'd, I'd argue that uh, Coco has great characters as well. I I admit, I, I, didn't, I was enjoying it so much, I didn't really question, okay, is this guy really the father? Is he going to be the hidden bad guy? I just went with the flow because I was enjoying the characters so much. Book of Life, I have other... Well, we could talk, debate that another day, I think. Oh, yeah. I like this more than Book of Life. I haven't watched Book of Life yet, but it's on my to-do list because of how similar this is to that. So it's, well, probably me wanting to compare the movie. But in all but, honesty... What... But Silver, will you... Uh, hold on, let me just say this. Will you say that one movie is exactly like the other? Will you say oh. that... Coco oh, is a ripoff no. of Book of Okay. Because that's what no. that's what was getting on my nerves. That's that's what I kept hearing this whole time. Oh, Book, Book of Life is getting ripped off by Coco. I'm like, I want to strangle those people. It's like, no, it isn't. Just good grief, guys. It's a movie. Calm down. Yeah, go on, Norman. Yeah, like I was saying before, um, what sold me to Coco was the music, the songs. They were really well sung by the lead actor. And yeah, I, I got nothing to more. I got nothing more to say. Like, it is great. I think that what sold me and um, them playing uh, the theme of Day of the Dead. That thing kind of well enlightened my view on the holiday because, as far as I know, it was not really that grim dark of a holiday. But looking how Disney Pixar did it was ah, so this is very interesting. This is a interesting way to look at it. So, yay, that's awesome. By the way, James, do you celebrate Day of the Dead? No, no, we don't se- that that's just that's Mexico. Mexico, yeah, Mexico right. man. That's not Spain at all. You're getting you're getting your cultures confused. I'm just asking, <laughs> I'm just asking. You're getting uh, you're making everybody angry on the comments. I'm, I'm just asking, I'm just asking. By the way, um you've always complained that the 
Spanish Mexican dub of something always irks you. You watch this in Spanish, I guess, right? Yeah, the the dub was fine, uh, even though it did have some rather awkward Mexican accent. I I think it was made for the comedic factor. Didn't ruin the movie for me. I mean, it's a uh, it's a Pixar movie, so of course it's gonna have good dubs. Uh, the the thing about Pixar is not like the thing that DreamWorks does. And yes, I'm gonna pit them against each other because when a movie from DreamWorks comes to Spain, they always have celebrity voice actors over here that have no idea how to dub a movie, even if they they wouldn't even be able to act wet in a th in a thunderstorm. <laughs> <laughs> that that's how bad the celebrity BAs we've had for DreamWorks movies, DreamWorks movies. But for Pixar, they have professional BAs that are that are good. They are not well-known names, but they know how to do their job. So it was, it, I was expecting a good dub, and I and I got a good dub. But it was weird when it came to you know, oh these accents, guys, these accents, you're taking them. A little bit too far. But probably it's from the original Spanish dub from Mexico because I do know that the lead actor for... Uh, I forgot his name already. Does... Diego Luna? Who's it? Was it Diego, was it Diego Luna, the, the main character? I... Luna. Luna? <laughs> <laughs> Silver, you are a one... Tra you have a one-track mind. Uh, yes, driving you guys nuts. It's just uh, Luna's a means to that end. Luna, Luna, Luna. Gael, Gael Garcia Bernal. There you go. Gael? I thought it was... Ga any... Gael... Give me a second. Gael, Gar Gael Garcia Bernal was Hector. Uh, no, I mean the kid. Anthony Gonzalez. Anthony, Gonz yeah. uh, 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 Anthony Gonzalez. Yeah, uh, him. He does sing the song in Spanish too. So uh, I, it could be him doing it. Could be? Yeah, Miguel. Miguel, that's his name. Uh-huh. But still... um. It could be that, I don't know. Eh. Oh, well. But anywho, uh, those are all of my good movies. And after I cycle through, we'll go to the bads, right? We we are only going to talk about one bad. How long have we been doing this already? Oh, it's almost probably, been an hour, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. And Silver, go yeah. ahead, man. Good movies. Good movie, The Darkest Hour. Ooh, I have not heard of the, that one. Oh, Yes. The story of Winston Churchill, the bulldog of England, the guy who led them into the war. But it's funny, given the the accolades of, you know, in hindsight, we kind of lose track of he was not a popular man moving in. He was not well received. He had many, many vices that strained his relationship with others. This movie, and my, I saw this with my father, who is a much more avid history fan than I, is a very faithful recreation of those events there's there is dramatic embellishment especially of uh, a scene just before the the climactic speech but it's just great acting great setting you can follow along what's going on even if you're new to the piece the war is more of a background but it is still a fantastic uh story and i'll, I'll say this if you take dunkirk darkest hour and the king's speech they form a, tri a trinity view of events of that time for England and all the moving parts therein. Hmm. All right, that's fascinating. Yeah. So, do, do, how how good is Gary Oldman as Winston Churchill? Oh, he's fantastic. Oh my god, I I want to watch that movie, but I wasn't completely sold on it. Uh, from the very first scene where where he appears, he's in the dark and he lights a cigar just as he's woken up. <laughs> He is Winston Churchill. I need to watch this movie now. <laughs> yes. Right. And Seppi, uh, what about you? Oh, you mean like for a movie or good movie? Yeah, yeah. You you have three movies well, left to talk um, about. Crap. Let me think. Uh, your name. It was it was a movie I recently saw with a group of friends. Oh, the anime one. Yes, the anime one. I heard a lot of good things about um, it. The plot, the plot is a little difficult to explain, but it's a very beautiful movie. Uh, it's about a boy and a girl from two different time periods where uh, one dreams to be the other and they wake up as one another and without knowing, they're screwing up each other's life. Like, the very next day, they'll go to school and be like, 
oh, this happened to you and this happened to you. What? I don't remember that. And then they figure out they've been dreaming about each other. So they write each other messages. They text each other. Only for... Can can I spoil it? I wouldn't. I, I feel like this know. is one of those things that it's obscure enough that a lot of people haven't heard of. I saw yeah. it. I loved it. Uh, it's on yes. my want to watch list. And I want to watch it too. Please don't spoil it. Okay, so, I won't spoil it then. All I so, all I can really say is go watch it because it's an experience. It's an experience, all right. I'm not one who usually gushes about great. No, even that would be a spoiler. Shoot, basically <laughs> there, there were there were moments near the end. I was like, oh no, no, please don't. Ah, oh, ah. And then they did. Oh, so uh, you know, my heart was going. <laughs> It really does grip you, mm. and it really makes you invested in, in this whole thing. All right, take a watch because some, you you told me because a Patreon guy wants us to quote unquote review it. Okay. I need to watch the Spanish yeah. dub. See, si, es bueno. <laughs> no, really, you have no idea. The Spanish dub of anime over here is fantastic. Well, we I have hope. the best dubbers or the best voice actors for for like anime that I that I have heard. I honestly like the Spanish dub of many things over the English dub when it comes to anime things. All right, I hope it's uh, available for you because I'm not 100% sure if it's fully out yet. But anywho, uh, James, last good movie. What do you mean last good movie? There's two good movies left to talk to to talk about. I only said three. I said Lego Batman, Atomic Blonde, and Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. Now, uh, so remember that I said at the beginning before we were recording that if Netflix movies were allowed in this list. Mm -hmm. Well, this is a Netflix movie. My, 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 one of my favorite movies of the year. I wasn't expecting to like this as much as I did. Uh, there have been, a, it's a documentary. There have been a lot of documentaries about how a movie is made, wh what goes behind the scenes. This movie goes so in depth that the, the, the footage of behind the scenes was kept in a drawer for almost 15 years until they took it out and they put the movie together. It's a movie titled Jim and Andy, The Great Beyond. It's a documentary about how Jim Carrey got so much in character to play Andy Kaufman in the 2000 movie Man on the Moon that by the time that the movie was over, Jim Carrey forgot who Jim Carrey was. Oh, wow. Uh, and because of that, he got so in character to play Andy Kaufman. He was Andy Kaufman behind the camera, outside of the outside of the movie. When he met with Andy, Co you can see him talking with Andy Kaufman's family. You see him talking to his wife and to his daughter. And he has a conversation with his daughter, with uh, Andy Kaufman's daughter, as Andy Kaufman. And it's so bizarre. It's it's so. It's fascinating to watch, and at the same time, it's it's very weird, but it's very moving at the same time because the daughter is saying, "I never got to meet my father, but this is this is like the next best thing." Like, thank you for what you're doing. It's pure insanity. Everything that could happen behind the scenes during making a movie, the good and the bad, they show it. They don't sugarcoat it. It's it's the most honest, true to life documentary I have seen in in a while, and it's on Netflix. You you sh you have no excuse. You have to go check it out. It's great. What was it called again? Jim and Andy: The Great Beyond. All right, all right. Uh, you, you sold me like that's something fascinating because I remember way back when, wanting to watch Men on the Moon, and it was kind of bizarre for me. Like I did got I got no idea what I went into, and I got no idea of what I was expecting. And you said you got two more left, James. I have one more. I have one more left. Wait a minute. Am I the only one who has one? No, Silver has yet to say another one. Yeah, I've got one more to go. All right. In that yeah. case, I'm going to pass it on to Silver then. I oh. have nothing left. All right, then. You have us, Sefi. <laughs> I realize that Thank might you. be more, de more depressing and, than uplifting, but... And you have all your ships as well. Speaking of ships, Dunkirk. Oh. <laughs> as I mentioned with The Darkest Hour, Dunkirk is this wonderfully intense movie even though a lot of it is characters just sort of trying to get from point A to point B. It's not huge on battle, but it's not light on action either. It tells the story of, from multiple viewpoints. There are There's a family who is, who is part of the 
uh, civilian fleet rushing to Dunkirk to rescue these soldiers from the beach and get them back to England to continue the war. Then there's the soldiers who are on the beach just trying to survive as they're being shelled and uh, strafed by airplanes. There's a story of air fighter pilots who are trying to uh, cover these soldiers, even though they're outnumbered, low on fuel, and just keep going. Here's the ultimate testament to the intensity of this movie. I had a full bladder during the towards the end of this film. Oh, my. And I call it the pee-pee test. Am I willing to stick around and see it through to the end and suffer the slings and arrows of really gotten to go? Or do, <laughs> or do I pull a suicide squad and say, oh, to hell with this, and go <laughs> get, get, get some nice relief? You know, Silver, I was taking you seriously until you said the words pee-pee test. <laughs> it's the pee-pee test. I cannot take you seriously anymore, but, but... Come here, give me a high five, give me a high five, because Dunkirk is also my favorite movie of the year. Oh, it is fantastic. Oh, wow. It's, oh my God. I, I got it on Blu-ray, rewatched it recently. I was just, I have no idea if it was attention or whatnot, streaming down with tears coming out of my eyes. Man, that movie's intense. It is, it is. And you... <laughs> I, I will admit that because of my vulnerable state at the end, it's like, oh my God, where's the resolution? <laughs> End it. End it. I don't want to leave, but I cannot stay. Uh, the, no, I'm not going to spoil it, but the way that the story is told, the way that the movie is edited, you get to that scene uh, at, 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 where there is the scene at night, and then you see one of the characters on one of the boats, and, and then you go, wait a minute. This guy is this guy is oh so that's what that's how this movie's told it's, it's so clever it's so silly it's chris it's chris nolan i'm 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 biased you are you like chris nolan as well Silver? oh yes very much yeah oh man <laughs> this, this movie's great <laughs> so it, it it is fun it well it's intense it's dramatic it has likable characters Yep. My, my father, brother, and I had a good-spirited debate over some of the character motives afterwards. Not because they are poorly done, but because, as with real people, you, you view things in different ways. That's just human nature. Although I might lose James's uh, street cred, it does pass the pee-pee test. <laughs> <laughs> it, it is, uh, just so I could add my, my two cents to, uh, to the movie discussion, um, a lot of people usually bring... Oh, best war movie since Saving Private Ryan. Saving Private Ryan is rather overrated, a bit overdone uh, to my liking. Now, Dunkirk is... Uh, imagine if Saving Private Ryan had literally none of the blood, because this is the most bloodless war movie I have seen in my life. It, it, it almost has literally no blood in it, but it's going to leave you psychologically spent. It's more of a movie about the psychology of, of war, what goes in your head and what it feels like to, to, to be in there. It, it doesn't need to blow up a, a soldier into chunks and, and, and have another soldier with his guts spilling out. Like, oh God, it, it doesn't reach that level of exploitation. It's more subtle. It's more elegant. It's like a war movie uh, from another time period. Like, you could put this movie on a double session with Tora Tora Tora. And they will fit perfectly. And and if you say King's Speech and Darkest Tower followed by Dunkirk, they make a triple feature. Man, now I really need to watch Darkest Tower. Yes. All right. If you're then. putting it to to to, to that standard, man, yes. that's well, great. Looks well, like that's it. Yeah. Th those, we we those... we did tackle all five yeah. except Safi, who only had like three. Can't really complain, but still, we did our best. So, um, <laughs> we're at the final stretch, which is disappointing and surprising. So. Uh, well, no, worse, worse, worse. We need to worse. talk about the worst movie of the year. Ah, worse. Come Emoji on. movie. Uh, <laughs> that we watched. We start right away, yeah, that we watched. Oh, then I have nothing. Uh, I haven't watched the Emoji movie. I, 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 have don't I wasn't going to willingly go out to see the Emoji movie. I'm not going to watch it. If, not, if Sony doesn't want to sponsor me, then no. I care so little about the Emoji movie that I haven't even pirated it. <laughs> Screw that movie! I don't wanna. Yeah, there is. I I did not see it either, but I will say there is one thing mm -hmm. that came out good okay. as a result. What was it? One thing. 
Patrick Stewart getting <laughs> <in> interviews <laughs> talking about playing the poo. He does not have to. I'm I don't poop. need to see him play the poop. I just need to see him react to the poop. I need to see him talking on, I think it was uh, the, the Late Show, talking about uh, the the role and how he got into character. And he is a delight, but he is not going to make me see this movie. Okay. No. All right. Although I did need to see him that jolly and happy because I saw him in Logan. So sad. Oh. <laughs> um. What? A, what? A... You know what? That is range. You go from playing <laughs> Professor Xavier to playing poop. <laughs> yeah, that actually is the. That's sh not a word. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <gasps> Silver said a swear word. My I childhood did. is ruined. Oh, oh, oh sweetie, but needs to do something. Innocence is gone. Oh, you should see him <laughs> in the last show we did. Oh, oh. Uh, but wait, anyway, it wasn't the. Oh, oh wait, that was miraculous. Uh, no, that you went insane. I, did you curse on that one? I don't remember. I, I, I had think a, you did. Yeah. I did. Wait, which show was it? I was. I definitely wasn't on that one. It was Miraculous Ladybug, the Christmas special. Mm -hmm. You should watch that one. It was fun. <laughs> oh, but anyway, when it comes out, I will. I will check it out. <laughs> it, it is out. I got. I listened to myself and got a grin of how crazy I sounded. <laughs> really, but, you did? <laughs> yes. <laughs> It's very rare that I get to hear myself go wiggy. <laughs> wiggy, wiggy. But anyway, I will say that uh, I'm sure Patrick Stewart's acting was the potpourri. <laughs> uh, boy, so, so yeah. worst movies that we have seen this year. Come on. All right. Um, honestly, for me, if we're going to go for worse, uh, this is like beating a dead horse because everybody's been beating it. And I don't know if I want Transformers. Yeah, I know. It's... Uh, <laughs> I, I, I no, don't even know. No way, really? Yeah. But no. I, it's, it's like it's like picking on the... No, it's, it's like... No, I, I do want to say it, but I don't know. I, I, I could be all controversial by picking Blade Runner, but... Uh, wow. <laughs> but yeah. that was disappointing rather than bad. Uh, Transformers it is then. Transform no, you know what? Resident Evil, the final chapter, that pissed me off. <laughs> yeah, mm. that's my final thing. Yeah, yeah. The, the Mila Jovovich variety hour. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the thing of this one is, it says the final chapter. I went in expecting schlock. I got schlock. Everybody was kind of fighting and whatnot. Yeah, 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 yeah. And the ending was, what is this crap? The ending is another cliffhanger. Yeah, which another is another cliffhanger. I know. Yeah. Surprisingly, yeah, like, oh, yeah. You can't say it's the final chapter and leave it on a cliffhanger. That's just uh, silly. I know. You, you forget, silly. this is Paul W. S. Anderson, the director of Pompeii we're talking about here. I it's... didn't see Pompeii. Good! Don't! It's but awful. I, I listened to the song, though. <laughs> eh, de -do, de -do, de -do, de -do. Uh, but uh... I didn't know there was a song about Pompeii. Oh, dear. Uh, but in all honesty, this movie was rather bad. Like, it's... Like... You you thought that being the final chapter that it closed the story nicely, but no man. Like you thought that Alice was going to die because she sacrificed herself and whatnot. No man, there was a test to see if you like. Uh, sweetie, but please help me with this one. That's not a word. This movie. <laughs> oh, we are out, we are off the rail now. Yeah, like no, this movie can go with Patrick Stewart. <sighs> oh, Silver. What about you? Well, here's the funny thing about me. I skipped a lot of movies I thought I wouldn't like, and more often than not, I think I was justified, validated. I'm smart. <laughs> Good on you, man. I will say, of the movies I saw, Pirates of the Caribbean Dead Man's Chest mm. was... Mm. It was a popcorn flick. It was what you kind of expected, but that's the problem. The first Pirates was charming and and surprising and quirky but ever since then they've just been milking the same thing and johnny depp has kind of become lost in the role jo johnny depp has been on autopilot since 2005 yeah so it's not bad in the sense that it was offensively terrible but you it is what you expect and what i expected wasn't much and that's unfortunate i will however give a shout out to anyone who who made it through Alien Covenant. Really? Oh, my friends were livid. They were. 
furious. Do you do you do you want me to do you want me to improve Alien Covenant for you? I don't really plan on seeing it, but go okay. ahead. Okay. Watch either the Blu-ray or DVD of the movie with the audio commentary of Ridley Scott uh, on and play the drinking game uh, w- with it. Every time that Ridley Scott says something that is completely and utterly batshit insane, take a shot. You won't be able to make it through the 10 minute mark without <laughs> liver damage. What, uh, what, can you give me an example of at least one crazy thing he said? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Towards the end of the movie, he is talking about... Well, have you seen Alien Covenant? I have not. That's nope. why I can't say if it's good or bad, but my friends... Oh, Nelly, get the riot shields. <laughs> oh, well, there is, there, is a, there is a point where there is a twist about to happen, and Ridley Scott is like, well, of course you know that the twist is going to happen. I mean, duh. Duh. That is a I like maybe some butthead kind of duh. So it's a duh kind of twist, you know? Not even paraphrasing. That's literally what he says. Wow. <laughs> He breaks for a moment to say that he likes Phoebe some bad The man is a complete lunatic. Okay. <laughs> it's amazing. Uh... Um, <laughs> what, what were your friends saying about Alien Covenant? I am very curious now. Oh, they were furious of what it had done to the lore. How it, it basically made, a, what was it, Alien Genesis, the, free, the previous movie? Oh, uh, Prometheus. No, no, Prometheus, that's right. They were saying it made Prometheus completely pointless. Basically, it was just outrageous how one character kind of usurps the entire franchise. Yes. This and is correct. This is correct. Now, from their summary, here's my main beef with just the idea. Part of the fear the original Alien instilled is that in the dark recesses of space, there are things we cannot imagine. And we are, and it's terrifying. It is sort of an eldritch horror approach. We are on an island of ignorance in a sea of terrible truths this movie alien covenant it takes the unknown and drags it screaming back to earth it makes it it limits it to just earth and humanity's creations we're the darkness and the 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 awfulness the rest of the universe is a pretty chill place it seems it's not wrong and it is true when your friends say that a character completely bypasses entire franchise and becomes the focus not to give anything away, but do you remember in Prometheus? Have, have I, any of you guys seen Prometheus? Yeah, I remember saying, run to the left, you idiot. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. The audio commentary for Ridley Scott for that one is also the, the, the stuff of legend <laughs> when it comes to insane commentary. Uh, no, I mean, there is uh, the, the character of David, the android in Prometheus. He is the main character on Alien Covenant. He's the protagonist. He is the focus. The, the franchise, uh, the, this new series of movies that Ridley Scott started up. Grab he is, He's the focus. Yeah, grab it. Yeah. Seriously, watch it with the audio commentary. It's almost worth it. Uh, but I, I definitely do not... Uh, uh, I don't disagree with your friends. They are right. Alien Covenant is one of the most disappointing movies last year. Not the most, but w- one of the most. May I talk about the, the one I hate the most? <laughs> I'm going to give it Please. to Seppi, if Seppi has anything. Oh. No, I'm good. All right. I already Sophie said, said she... I didn't really have anything. All right, did Sophie I? said so, she didn't have anything. Yeah. So it's all in you, James. Okay. Uh, there have been a lot of bad movies in 2017. I mean, the first movie that I watched was Assassin's Creed. <laughs> <laughs> I think that that set the bar to how bad the year was going to be movie-wise. Uh, and, I mean, I, I watched other big thirds. Like, I did mention Transformers last night. That movie was insufferable. And uh, King Arthur, Legend of the Sword was... That movie was awful. Or Monster Trucks was a waste <laughs> of my time. I have no idea why I went to see that one. But one movie, one, not only the, not only wasted my time, mm-hmm. it wasted my time four times because <laughs> I had to show it to other four people that <laughs> haven't seen it yet. And I had to see, no, you need to see this movie. It's terrible. Um, it was even more depressing when one of my friends actually told me that they liked it. That that made me want to lose hope in humanity. Okay. Uh, uh, and it 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 dared to spit on the face of one of the most important pillars of cinema. Uh, and I, I'm talking about uh, I'm talking about Tom Cruise's The Mummy. Oh, okay, okay. Oh, I thought you were going to say Star Wars. <laughs> no, 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 no. Last last year they was fine. Come on, people are overreacting about that one. No, I'm talking about 
I'm talking about uh, the mummy. Tom mm. Cruise is the mummy. Mm, 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 yeah. With with the self righteous, we start this universal logo. First thing you see, dark universe. It's like, oh, we're starting this new series of movies. We're gonna spend 125 million dollars on making this film. Couple of months later, all of the Dark Universe studios shut down because the movie was a complete and utter flop. Oh, God. For good reason. The movie has no focus. The movie has no character. The movie has no soul. Mm -hmm. It's the it, it's the crystallization of what everybody has been trying to do for the past few years, which is to build a movie universe like Marvel is doing. Now, Universal is, has been trying to do this since 2010. They they were they were gonna do this with. Uh, the Wolfman. It didn't work out. So they said, we're going to do it with Dracula Untold. That movie didn't do well. And now they're like, no, we're going to do it with The Mummy. And we're going to have Tom Cruise in it because he's a big star and he's going to drag a lot of people in the theater. And we're going to have uh, this director who did uh, who did the screenplay for Star Trek and Star Trek Into Darkness. It can't fail! <laughs> oh my god. Oh my oh. goodness. Yeah, I... I, no. I heard stories from my friend about the movie and I seen the Nostalgia Critics review of it. And that was a glorious review. Yeah, true. And here's the thing. At first, I thought it was something, you know, original. Like, it didn't have to do with building a universe around it or whatnot. And it's, you know, the mummy. It's a generic name. Until my friend told me that this was supposed to be the remake to the previous one. The... Uh, who was that guy who played... Uh, Brendan Fraser one? Yeah. No way! What? What? Yes. What? They say that this was supposed to be a replacement for this one, a reboot, as they say. And I, I was like, what? You, you're serious? And he says, yes. And I say that, no, that will not work. The Brendan Fraser one had heart. It had... Moments of Carac awesome. it, it had character. The action was good. <laughs> the yeah, okay, it was cheesy and corny and way too tongue in cheek for its own good. But it knew what it wanted to be. This movie has no idea what it wants to be. Also, S Silver, you have fallen very silent. Am I am I scaring you with my anger? No, not at all. It's just that I didn't go see it. <laughs> good. Me neither. And good. I, and I have heard of the arrogance of this movie. Uh, them saying, "Oh, we, uh, we are going to start a whole new universe. That's going to be the best thing. It's going to have ice cream and <laughs> liquor. In fact, the, forget the ice cream." There is one scene where they they literally meet the uh, they literally meet the Samuel L. Jackson version of uh, Nick Fury oh, in God. this universe, which is played by Russell Crowe. He plays Doctor Henry Jekyll. Oh, yes, Doctor Jekyll is like Nick Fury in this universe. He has a laboratory, and it has th there are jars all over it, and you can see a skull with fangs on one of the jars, mm -hmm. and then you can see the the hand of the creature from the Black Lagoon in another one, a giant squid in the other one, and he's like, "Welcome to Prodigium," and oh, god damn it, this this movie has no, it it has no focus. It does it, like. They don't focus on the mummy character at all. They tell you her backstory and all that, but they don't explain you what the character, she, what character she is. Yeah. They don't explain you who Tom Cruise's character is. No, they uh, kind of did because they say like, "Oh, Tom Cruise is a uh, man." He, wild. He's a he's a he's a thief and a and a, a guy in the U.S. Army yeah. uh, that he likes to steal uh, things from wherever he is destined to. I wouldn't have a problem with this movie. If it wasn't because I look back to, I don't even talk about the the Brendan Fraser mummy movies. Those are those are great popcorn yeah. fun. Yeah. That's it. But the original mummy, the 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 nineteen thirties mummy, the one with Boris Karloff, mm -hmm. that that movie is a love story for the ages. That that movie is, uh, it's subtle, it's delicate, it's it's almost like a horror movie mixed with elements of romance. And it's very heartfelt, and it's very sweet, uh, while at the same time being quite horrifying and quite brutal. Uh, but it's it's most important because it's one of the original movies that 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 came out when cinema was like you know exploding. This is like 1933. We're talking about. It's a movie that has a legacy. 
you take that idea and then you transport it into the, with these modern sensibilities. Let's build a cinematic universe around it. Let's put a ton of action in it, and let's go into let's throw the guy from the Mission Impossible movies. You are not just stripping the movie of its soul. You just took the soul, emptied the carcass, and now you're going down a hill with it. So yeah, no, I mean I want to see it in theaters. I just I had to see it in theaters because I I, I was like okay, cynicism aside. Give the movie a chance; it might surprise you. I honestly went to it with an open mind. No, it's it's awful. It's awful. Let's hope that they stop making cinematic universe movies with with this one, and they just leave Marvel to do it <laughs> yeah. because they have been doing it. They have been doing it for the past ten years. Yeah. They have a good rapport, and they do, they're doing it better than any. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, well, at least they but planned it ahead. They're taking their time. In between the previous Avengers movie and the new one that is coming, we have had one, two, three, four, five. We're, we have seven movies in between. That's called build-up. It's called storytelling. It's called character development. It's called structure. You cannot kickstart a, an entire universe. I think we need to move forward because this yeah. has been an endurance run, yeah. and I think we're, we're at our greatest surprise movies. Yep. Yep. Oh, yes. Let's talk about those. Well... Surprise for me is, well, here's the thing. I don't usually watch Asian movies, like literally from Asia. And I have to say that my movie is Bleeding Steel starring Jackie Chan, which is Ooh. kind of interesting Ooh. because it's purely made in China, but the movie is told in part English. Like there's certain part where the main characters are in Australia. So most of them are talking in English, but uh, when there were no foreigners around, they talk in Chinese with subtitles, thank goodness. But this is the a movie after Jackie Chan uh, played his movie, which is The Foreigner. And I have to say that this one was really surprising and good. Uh, it stars Jackie Chan as a secret agent who has to take care of something. You know what? If it's out, you guys should go watch it because it's really good. It's surprisingly good. And Silver, what about you? For me, it was Thor Ragnarok. Really? No. Wow. The, the Thor movies have never have been enjoyable, but they've never really wowed me. Mostly because everyone is just so such a sourpuss or a stick in the mud, except for Loki. So here comes Thor Ragnarok, where... Everyone is suddenly quipping. Everyone has funny lines and jokes. Mm-hmm. Everyone is just over the top, and it's bright and colorful. And you see the Hulk la- uh, sharing in the spotlight and actually being really enjoyable. Mm-hmm. I'm like, wow, I'm having way more fun with this. I thought that this was going to be adventure, but this is also fun and an adventure and some heavy stuff. W- would you say that uh, the Chris Hemsworth is making it a little bit Kevin from the Ghostbusters remake, maybe taking it a bit to the Kevin degree with his quipping and his his comedy? No, because I thought Thor was being intelligent or insightful or at least aware, whereas Kevin was meant to be oblivious and exceptionally stupid. <laughs> As I understand, a great majority of this movie was improvised. Uh-huh. They just said, here's the scene, but you get to make your own dialogue. Go ahead. And... I think they did. They carried it very well. Plus, it's the only time I think I've gotten to hear Anthony Hopkins as Odin going, oh, and sorry, we're going to have to bring Sweetie Pot in on this. Oh. That's not a word. <laughs> <laughs> a fun fact about improvising. Uh, there was a kid from the make a wish Foundation who went through the whole scene, uh, who just went there for behind the scenes and stuff. He met Chris and he said, hey, um, uh, Thor should say something like, I know this guy. He's a friend from work. And they added and in. And one of the trailers. Yeah, I know. And they added it in. And that line was pure ghoul. <laughs> that was, that was a great, that was great. Yeah. But still, <laughs> still. The, the, the scene with Bruce Banner, now, now they transform from the Hulk to actually Bruce Banner, where he's talking with Thor. It's like, you don't want, you don't want to talk to me. You just want the Hulk. You don't even oh, care. Oh, hey, I do have a surprise movie. Oh, okay. You don't care about me. <laughs> I just realized that. All right, then. All right, then. So there was Thor for you, then, Silver? Yes, please. Right. Seppi, uh, what's your movie, then? Okay, I'm just going to make it quick and brief. Mm-hmm. Ha, 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 ha. I enjoyed Captain Underpants, the first epic <laughs> movie. 
really though. Talk about confidence in uh, continuing the product. Oh, wow. Well, I actually remembered uh, reading and enjoying the original Captain Underpants uh, books as a kid. So when this movie came out, I was very, very happy. I don't know why. Like, this was all the dumb humor in the right way that can't really harm anybody because it was just doing its own thing and it was great. So is it good? Or is it just okay? It enjoys itself. Like, it's nothing to be taken seriously. You don't even have to be a, um, you know... Fan. You didn't even have to read the books to enjoy it as long as you just enjoy it. Yeah, all right. That's surprising. It's one of those things where it's like you can't really get mad at it. (laughs) It's just doing its own thing, and it's great. All right, all right, all right. And James, what about you? Split. Is my most surprising movie of the year. Split. By far the best movie M. Night Shyamalan has done since Unbreakable. Really now? I'm not joking. That movie was... Went into it thinking, ah, this, who cares about M. Night Shyamalan anymore? Only he cares about himself. But hey, it turned out to be a really darn good movie. James McAvoy is amazing, portraying 42 different characters. <sighs> man, that man has range. And the twist at the end... Nobody is going to see that twist coming. No way. It's so good. Uh, but besides, the people that complain, they say they don't want to watch it because uh, it's making fun about split personality disorder. No. No, it isn't. It isn't. You have no idea where the movie is taking you. Watch it. Give it a chance because it's going to surprise you. Damn good thriller. Does it bring back M. Night Shyamalan to its heyday? Or is it just... Something like meh. It it no. It's the for a movie that takes place inside a bunker about seventy five percent of the time. It's it's visually interesting. It's never boring. The the actors are great. All the acting across the board in that movie they are all great. Uh, and the story is very tight. There is there is little to no plot holes in it. Uh, which is weird coming. I will say there is not even a sing- there is not a single plot hole in it. It's a very tightly written movie. Hmm. Um, so yeah, se- seriously, definitely give it a chance. It's a good, good, good thriller. All righty then. Uh, it's something to consider. So anywho, um, that's been our quote unquote reviews of our the. <laughs> that's been our review for the movies that we watch. Technically, there's more, but hey, we have a time limit, and if we were to talk more, let's just say that this will hit three hours so no so anyway <laughs> if you would like to support the show you can do so at patreon.com and coffee.com with every support you'll get early access to the review and discussion podcast exclusive and deleted content and a huge thank you from me talking about thank yous i'd like to thank lurker cat and jogatorius starstream myself lag amy mark and also charles thank you guys for the also support you have been great to me so anyway, I have been Norman Sanzo. I am Cecil Bequil. I am Masafi. And I have been Mr. James Park. Send me an email if you want to get a pizza roll. <laughs> and we'll guys catch you next week with another fun episode of the MBS show. See ya. Adios. Bye-bye. Bye. <laughs> so if you stay here for this part... Next week, we'll be reviewing episode 18 of season 7. So, wait for that one, I guess. (laughs) Yeah.